big mind is obviously opening our mind to the infinite. Just opening our consciousness to the infinite. It, again, I can use best the triangle. So if the left-hand side of the triangle is the more restricted mind and heart, the, the, the mind and heart that we encase and we call that the self. It's, it's limited, it's finite, um, it's, it's contained in, in our story, who I think I am, who I believe I am, uh, you know, what I would call Gempo. Okay, that's the small mind. All of this in this body, what goes on here and in my thoughts, my beliefs, my concepts, my opinions, my ideas, my notions about who I am. Okay, that's the limited, that's the left hand side. On the other side, big mind is when you throw all that out, when you drop all that, when you drop all the concepts, all the ideas, all the notions of who I am, all the, the story about it, and then I'm in that wonder, in that transcendent state where I just don't know who I am. I'm so big, but there's no one there to know. There's no subject-object division. There's no one there to say, oh, I am this. There's no hearer, there's no listener, there's no seer. I am all, I am the whole, I am the infinite, I am the eternal. That's big mind. What we could call the absolute, what we could call God. Big heart is the apex. Big heart is when we combine or we include all the personal, the limited self, the small mind, the confined or limited mind, and the big mind, out of the wisdom of big mind and the conventional wisdom of the limited self, we move to the apex, and that's big heart, and we open our heart up to its limitless capacity, its unconditional love and caring, its unconditional. At this point, my love for all sentient beings, my love for all inanimate as well as animate, for all, all things and all beings, for the planet, it is so beyond anything I can conceive of or imagine because it's beyond imagination, it's beyond conception. It's so open. But because it's balanced with big mind, because there's that balance, I can care infinitely. I can, compare, I can care without conditions, unconditionally. That's big heart. And then we take these two into our daily life and we function with wisdom and compassion. That's big heart, big mind. Like all technologies, uh, spiritual technologies, we're advancing. And for 2,500 years, what has eluded us in the spiritual practice, in the spiritual world, and Zen is also known as the sudden school uh, of Buddhism, and it's probably the most sudden and immediate path. Most of the paths are more gradual, but Zen has always uh, called itself the, the instant awakening, the sudden awakening, that in one moment we can have a sudden realization or a sudden awakening, like happened to me in February of 71, and it's, you know, it's happened many, many times, and to many spiritual practices it's happened. But what has eluded us is how do you get someone to wake up? So we have something what's called a turning word. So if the student is really ripe, kind of like a chick and an egg, and the chick is really ready to be born, the mother hen will peck at that shell and crack it open. But if she cracks it too soon, the chick dies because the chick's not fully developed. If she cracks it too late, the chick also will die. So the mother hen, the timing is absolutely essential. So a, a turning word is to peck at that shell at just the right moment when the student is ready to awaken. And that's always been an art. It's always been something that, that a master has to be totally tuned in to the disciple in order to help them awaken and say just the right thing. So like one of those was a, a monk came to the great master Joshua and said, does a dog have Buddha nature? And Joshua just said, moo. And moo is not the sound of a cow. It was actually in Chinese, it was woo, woo, like that. And the student opened up, the student awakened. Another one um, was, uh, what is the meaning of Bodhidharma? Bodhidharma was the great master who came from India and brought Zen from, or Buddhism from India to China, and that became Zen. So the question is, 
why did Bodhidharma come from the West? And Joshu said, the oak tree in the garden. And at that moment, he was probably looking out at this oak tree, and the student looked out at this oak tree and had an opening, had an experience. So we've been able to bring students to a sudden realization, but it was never, it was never uh, that we could determine the moment, the, the, the time and the place. Everything had to be just right. The, the soil had to be just prepared. What Big Mind, the technology of Big Mind is, that we can do it with 400 people in an audience, we can do it with 10,000 people over the TV screen uh, or the computer screen. We can do it with millions of people and we can determine when we do it because all it requires, and this is all it requires, is that the person is prepared and wants to open up and has just enough trust to follow the directions. So like this moment, if I was to say to you, may I, speak to big mind please may i speak to big mind and then as the listener says okay i am big mind and then take a moment to just reflect who you are i'm no longer gempo i'm no longer dennis merzel now i am big mind and then when we look in to our mind we see as big mind I can find no birth, no beginning. I can find no limit. I find no end. I find no parameters, no edges. My mind is infinite, eternal, and there's no genpo. There's no self. And that is technology. <laughs> because we've never been able to do that before. Ten years ago, almost exactly, it was ten years ago June, that I discovered Big Mind. And since then, hundreds of thousands of people have awakened either through workshops or DVDs or the internet or YouTube uh, with this process. Because the technology, not only the technical technology is there, but the spiritual technology is there. Because by asking to speak to this voice, once I identify that I am it, then all the wisdom of the voice is there. So I can also ask to speak to the awakened mind. May I please speak to the awakened mind? And then I say, okay, who are you? I'm the awakened mind. Well, who are you not? Well, I'm not the non-awakened mind. I'm not the unawakened mind. I'm not the mind that is deluded. I am the awakened mind. So what are you? I'm awake. What does that mean? You're awake. I'm awake. I'm conscious. Well, what are you conscious of? This. What's going on right here now? What, my surroundings? Watching this interview? I'm awake. Well, what's different now than before? Well, now I realize I'm awake. I didn't know I was awake before. I am awake. What does that mean? Well, my whole life just changed. I am an awakened being. Well, what does that mean? I am a Buddha. If we use the, those terms, I am an awakened one. When the Buddha was asked, who are you? He said, I'm sorry, but that's the wrong question. So the questioner said, well, what's the right question, the correct question? He said, what are you? So the person said, well, okay, what are you? He said, I'm awake. 